everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge and welcome to another book recommendations video. So today I'm doing a much requested video. And I totally understand why it is very requested. I mean, curvy fat and BBW wrecks are something that is hard to find. Um, it's often something that I don't even like think about looking for, even myself as a bigger woman because I'm pretty good at self insertion in a lot of books that I'm reading funny thing to say when we're talking about books that are this sexy all the time but I will say that when you come across books with someone who looks like you or you feel represented by them that it can feel amazing and as a well-educated pretty well-off white woman I find myself well represented in those aspects a lot of times but not so much how I look as someone who was you know even like extremely obese until last year where you know if you've been on my channel for a while you know that I needed to do some weight loss for health reasons and that's still something that I'm working towards COVID has kind of put me in like a grinded gears stop for a while with that but it is something that I'm still really aware of um you know I'm still probably always going to be a bigger woman in my whole life and I don't think that anyone you know anyway that's not the point we're going with this I want everyone to be happy in their own bodies and that's easier to do when we can find stories that we feel represented in and that help us to feel loved and seen and yeah it's so good so I have nine ten recommendations here of books that I read most of them just recently because you know when this recommendation has come up quite a few times and I've tried to put a list together I could only think of two that I'd read recently that I wanted to bring up um, and one of them is an old favorite that I mean I'm going to talk about it anyway because I love the book so I want to bring it up but it was really hard to put a list together so I put this on the back burner and I was like well in October I'm going to try to find me some books with this in it and there's a few that I specifically looked out because I went to the Faded Mates podcast and I looked at their curvy girl interstitial and then there was some that I just kept like finding like I didn't even think that I was gonna find them I kind of just stumbled upon them and then I was like oh my gosh this is a plus size girl I didn't realize that and that was fun because it was also too like I was consciously like looking for that and so it was cool to see what appeared when I was just looking for it so one other thing I wanted to note, maybe I'll show these. There are two books with curvy girl, curvy women that I'm planning to read in November. Um, one of them is Spoiler Alert, which I think a lot of people are recommending curvy books because this book just came out. I'm planning to read this in November, so that's why you won't see it on my recommendations list. Hopefully it will be on a recommendations list in the future. And then I also heard that the main character in All Scott and Bothered was curvy, which I didn't even know. I guess I didn't pay attention when I was reading the first book in the series to know that Cecilia was plus size, but from what I've heard, she is. So I'm planning to read these two books in November and hopefully add more to this list. So I wanted to tell you about it in case you want to check out either of these books for that reason. But let's go ahead and start. Actually, the first book that I'm going to start with is the one and only recommendation that I have for a over like bigger hero because I I wanted to have like curvy men or like plump men as well. And I haven't read a lot of them either unless like I've read a lot of like big men or men who are like bears. But to me, that doesn't count as like fat or like overweight men if they're just muscly and stuff. I don't know it's not the same for me so the recommendation I want to make for a like bigger man is Zenny um, by Rebecca Weatherspoon because in Zenny Mason is kind of described as being like plump and he's also someone who's really big but he's explained as being a little bit like doughy so he's not all muscle um, so I just wanted to bring that up in case because you know women like all different kinds of men obviously there's more men who are average size as well but I just wanted to bring that up because I feel like that's not super well represented either because when the shoe's on the other foot I think we as women don't always want to read about you know flabbier men either um, so just being fair if we want to be you know to be fair across the board I want to recommend that book to you um, because Mason was still very sexy and he gets pegged in that book, which is great. So, 
going through this, let us start with uh, the ones I already knew about and already owned. So I, of course, got to talk about my girl Penelope from Romancing Mr. Bridgerton. This one you might not know she's plus size because uh, Penelope don't look plus size in the step back. Um, that's okay. You won't really find plus size women in the step backs from any time um, before now. Um, but Penelope is someone I always knew was, she's also a spinster, she's also older, um, but w one way that we're going to see good representation for this is the woman who's playing Penelope in the Netflix TV show, The Bridgertons. She is plus size, and so that is something I'm very proud of them for doing, um, and I'm really excited to see that. I hope that actress is good, but this is a friends to lovers, um, this... It'd be weird to read this as a standalone, but I feel like a lot of you are going to be doing read-throughs of the Bridgertons to prepare for the TV show to release on Christmas. So, you're going to love Penelope. Like, that's all, that's all I can say. Then, I have two books to share from the Wicked Villain series by Katie Robert. Um, she writes all body types, sizes, races, sexual orientation. She writes it all. She's amazing. So, we have Tink from A Worthy Opponent. This is a enemies to lovers. This is BDSM. Um, I like this. Tink is a brat and Hook is, I mean, kind of a brat tamer, but also he really likes it. I really like that. This is in um, kind of a, a, not a range marriage, but like a marriage arrangement, more of that. Um, they kind of are like forced to be together because of circumstances that are happening. Um, there's some really cool kink scene in here. I hadn't seen Shirabi really done before. Um, that's done in here. Um, there is a really amazing male, 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 female, female sex scene in this one. <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> so, yeah. I love Tink. She's so sassy. She is a clothing designer. She designs the wardrobes for a lot of people in this world, and I love her. She's amazing. Then I want to talk about Ursa from The Sea Witch. This is a female, female, male menage. Um, Ursa is a plus size black woman. She is gorgeous. She is voluptuous and she's a boss ass bitch. She is the dom of, well, currently Alaric. I always mess up his name. Do we say Alaric? Yeah. And Zuriel. And this also has a virginity auction. Um, this also has, um, yeah, it's awesome. I love this one too. Um, it's not my favorite in the series, but that's more due to Zuriel than it is to Ursa. Like Ursa is my favorite part of the book. And I love seeing kind of like the burdens that she carries and how she handles it. And this book is actually, it's really interesting to see the woman carrying the burden for, because I mean in like a BDSM relationship, a lot of the times it's a dom who is carrying people's burdens, you know, for his submissive. And in this case, she's the dom, D-O-M-M-E, and she wants someone to help her with her burdens and everyone just wants to take, take, take from her and take the peace that she gives them when she takes control instead of helping her. And anyway, I thought it was really interesting. Um, I love Katie Robert. I love how she tells a story and I love just, I love it. I'm so sad that the Wicked Villain series is coming to an end. Makes me sad. All right. Then I read recently Never Sweeter by Charlotte Stein. Um, this is a tough book to read. So this is about Letty and Tate. And so Letty was bullied by Tate and his friends when she was in high school. Um, to the point where she was run off the road by, Tate wasn't the one driving, but he was in the vehicle, and he was the one who called an ambulance for her, but he, like, never told her about it, and now it's been a few years. She's had to go through physical therapy to be, like, able to walk properly after this. She has a scar from the, it, it's just messed up, and then Tate ends up going to her college and he wants to make amends with her. And so he puts himself in her way in a few different ways to, you know, bring about a reconciliation with her. And it's tough. However, I listened 
about this book on the Faded Make podcast, so I knew where it was going. And basically the whole book is a grovel because Tate realizes how he messed up. One thing I'll say though, Tate is a little bit dumb. Uh, and I say that with love. Um, he's a little bit dumb, so know that going in. But there's a lot about this book I appreciated because he really does love Letty's body and there is, uh, there's no excuse for how he bullied her because there never is, but there are reasons for it. And it was interesting. The reason I say he's dumb is <laughs> the entire conflict at the end after we've watched him like win her over consistently, his fuck up that leads to the darkest moment is all because he's dumb and not because he like actually messed up about anything it's because he's dumb and can't just like articulate what happened um so there's that but this book was like super sexy it was really sexy and it was cathartic for me in a way because i think there's a bit of a fantasy of some of us who would like our high school bully to all of a sudden be obsessed with us and trying to win us over i don't know it was interesting. Playing It Cool by Amy Andrews. This book is about Harper and Dexter. And so he is a footy ball player. I think this one takes place in Australia. I think so. And he loves curvy girls. And his team knows it. And all his friends know it. And after a game one day, um, his friends point out this girl to him and are like, you should date her. She's your type. And he is very focused on his career. He doesn't have time for any woman. And so it certainly doesn't have to do with what she looks like because he's all about all of her. And so he notices her but isn't going to do anything about it. And then he catches her stepbrother um, kind of like verbally abusing her and calling her fat and all these names. And so Dexter walks up and pretends to be her boyfriend or her date or something. He asks her out. And she's going to let him off the hook for it. And he's like, no, let's go on a first date. And they end up being friends with benefits because he has a lot going on in his life. Um, and, you know, it always eventually leads to more, right? But I, I like this one. Dexter was a bit frustrating in some aspects, but I like that our heroine isn't going to put up with it. Um especially because it's the hero who's teaching her that she doesn't need to put up with such things and then is treating her in a certain way and she's like, hey now, you can't put the genie back in the bottle, okay? Then we have Muffin Top by Avery Flynn. So I like this one for a few reasons. Um, a lot because our hero, Frankie, is a huge like six foot five firefighter who kind of the same thing like we have our heroine is Lucy and she needs to go to her high school reunion um Frankie also kind of an asshole he straight up in his head thinks how he wouldn't date a plus size woman but he really likes Frankie and she's friends with his brother's wife I think that's how it goes and so he agrees to go on her go to her high school reunion with her and pretend to be her date and quickly along the way he realizes wow I'm not usually attracted to this body type but I'm really into it right now and I really love that kind of thing I like that this one I feel like was realistic in that aspect is like some men a lot of men might just think like no I would never date this body type but then when you get to know a person and you see what's sexy about a body like that, when you're around that person, that can change. That is a perfectly reasonable like growth of character for you to be stubborn in one way and kind of an ass in that aspect and then grow. Like we grow and change. It happens. So that's something that I appreciate about Frankie. This was also a really sexy book. Um, I really like Lucy's dad. We're going to meet Lucy's dad in this. He's really fun. And yeah, it was fun. I love Avery Flynn's book, by the way. She's great. Then there is Blindsided by Amy Dawes. And this is about Mac and Freya. So this one's cool. This is a friends to lovers. This is another one where he's in sports. He's Scottish. Um, Mac, you can get it from the name there. Um, and this is a virgin heroine. 
she is yeah plus size girl dress is really quirky that's not a favorite trait of mine that oh the plus size girl is quirky because whatever but I'm not a huge fan when like any but when anybody's character trait is quirky because I'm like whatever whatever um but this is also like they end up being a friends with benefits he agrees to um uh have sex with her for her first time because he knows that he will treat her well that is something that as a friend he's real worried about that she would be treated well on her first time and that some guy won't just think she's easy because she's big and so they do it and then he's like well it only gets better the more times that you do it so we should keep doing it so i can teach you how to be better at it but really, I think I'm falling for you and I just want to keep sleeping with you. So let's be friends with benefits. So there's that. I really liked that. <laughs> then there is Sanctuary by Rebecca Weatherspoon. So this is book two in her Beards and Bonded series. The three of these are connected, but you don't need to read them in order. You really don't. I read them in order just because that's how it goes. But... It wouldn't really like spoil itself for you so this one is about uh, let me check I wrote it down Liz and Silas so Liz she is a black woman as well she is a lawyer she gets into a hairy situation where one of her clients previous clients puts a hit out on her because they didn't get the um, ending to their case that they were hoping for and so she ends up killing someone in her apartment who breaks in to try to hurt her. She kills him with a high-heeled shoe to the throat, which was very satisfying to read. So then her friend at the law firm, who really is the only one who sticks up for her, like, man, that was a frustrating part of the beginning of this book is just nobody was going to do anything about it. Like, they know that there's someone with a hit out on her and no one was doing anything about it. So her friend Scott, he has a twin brother named Silas who kind of runs a farm in this small town outside of the city. And so he brings her to stay with his twin brother. Well, him and his twin brother are not on speaking terms. They haven't spoken to each other for 10 years. But Silas agrees to let her stay there. But she'll need to pretend to be his girlfriend because otherwise nobody in town will believe that this woman just randomly showed up to stay with him. So they pretend that they like met online and that she's coming to stay with him for the first time. Silas also is autistic a little bit. Um, it made so much sense once the author explained that to me. She does really great building with him because she has him be, he's very blunt and just very like crude in some senses and not like good at picking up cues. And like Liz is really kind of like overwhelmed by this. The other thing about this one is Liz is a dom. She has been a dom before. And so she has very specific ways that she likes to have sex. She needs to be in control of the power exchange. And so the first time that they're going to do it, she's like, okay, I, I do want to have sex with you, but I need to have sex with you this way. And he's like, yep, sign me up. You can tie me up, have me, whatever you need, I'm, I'm into it. And it was a very sexy book. This entire trilogy, guys, so sexy. It's just like it says, all these men, they're like bears basically, or they're big, strong, rugged men. And there's some bondage in it, in all of them too. But this one, Liz is awesome. She's a tall, strong, tough lady. And I loved reading about her and her and Silas together. Made me really happy. There is some amazing sex scenes in Rebecca Weatherspoon books. I will say that. Then the last one I want to talk about that I really liked, and then I have two that are like, I read them and they have plus size, but they weren't my favorite, if that makes sense. But I still want to talk about them because they might be your favorite. So that is Her Sweet Alpha by Thyler King. So I just read this book. It's a standalone paranormal romance, and our heroine is plus size, black woman, and she's a waitress. And so in this world, werewolves are out, it, the way the setup of the story was, like the world building isn't super expansive because this is a standalone, it's not super long, but there was enough that I could get a picture of the landscape without the story like being bogged down by this, okay? But it kind of seems a little bit like a true blood sense where like the werewolves are out and so people know of them 
And so like people know who they are on site, basically they're easy to kind of pick out. And so we just like, we coexist with them and it's not a big deal. And so we have our alpha who his name is Dade. And the thing with these werewolves is that they can have a mate, but there's someone who's your perfect mate. And if someone isn't like mated, once they reach the age of 30, if you're a male, you become impotent. So if you wanna have a baby and you don't have a mate, you kinda need to like find one before you're 30 and like get them pregnant because you won't be able to afterwards. But he's been holding off because he doesn't want a mate if they're not his true mate. And he's had many offers from women because he's the alpha and so they all want to get with him and he's just been saying no. Then he goes to this restaurant and his waitress is Haley and or Hallie I'm not quite sure how we pronounce this but she like walks up she's the waitress sets down his glass of water and as her arm goes in front of his face he smells it and he just grabs her arm and like smells her and then he immediately is like you're my mate you're mine you're mine 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 and it just like oh uh. and Hallie's just standing there is like can you let me go please and he's like no and so he like stands up and he like pulls her to him and he's just like literally just like smelling her and his friend is like dude what are you doing but he's also a werewolf so he's like oh she's your maid oh my gosh and so he's really happy for him and then some of the patrons in the restaurant are like, what are you doing to this woman? Like, leave her alone. And here's the thing, like Dade, he is a cream puff, okay? He's a cream puff alpha. This is, there's a reason why it's called her sweet alpha. But that initial thrall of him being like, oh my God, I want you so bad, is pretty intense. And then she is like, can you just like calm down? Cause this is a little bit much for me. And he's like, yes, yes, I will, I will calm down. So she tries to run from him and he's able to just like follow her scent back to her house. But then just wait, cause it doesn't get, it doesn't get bad. This is still, it's so good. He um, says like, you're gonna be my mate. You're gonna have my pups. Like you're the only one for me. And she's like, dude, I'm not ready to just like, and she'll have to become a werewolf if she becomes his mate. She's like, I'm not ready to do that. And he's like, that's okay let's like date first. So he has a job where like he needs to go away during the week. So he gives her his phone number and is like, let's talk like every day. And so he calls and talks to her at the end of the work day every day. And so she, by the end of that time that he's gone, she's really excited to see him again. So I loved it because it's very clear right off the bat, you know, there's lots of sexual chemistry. He finally has like his boner back. It was very like he gets blooded, right? But he still would never force himself on his mate. So even though it seemed like that's where it's going, he got like very excited and is just ready to go. He was still very patient and loving and was like, I want you to be comfortable with this, but like, honey, you're it for me. Like, if you don't want me, like it's over for me. And I loved it so much. Um, Hallie, she has a lot of, you know, uh, body issues. Cause again, this is a plus size woman who she's been hurt before. And then it becomes clear that, well, he makes it clear to her that honey, I can't even like, I can't ever leave you and I don't want to, but like my boner doesn't work for anybody but you. And I love that so much. It's just it's chef's kiss. It was so sweet. It's a little bit bonkers, a little bit crazy, but I love too that it was a standalone paranormal werewolf romance. It was sexy. It was fun. Pretty low angst. Like there's a conflict, but it's kind of silly. Um, and it was wonderful. So I highly, highly recommend Her Sweet Alpha. So then I have, like I said, two books that I want to recommend, but they weren't my favorite but they might be yours. So the first one of that is Well Played by Jen DeLuca. This is the second book in like the, you know, Renaissance Fair series she's doing. And this one is about Stacy and Daniel. So I only gave this book two and a half stars because it wasn't my niche. Um, I was really excited to read about Stacy. I really liked her from the first one. Um, Daniel, he just messed up a few too many times for me. 
because this was an epistolatory romance through email and that takes place over a large chunk of the book. This is definitely women's fiction. We spend a lot of time with Stacy's insecurities and the problems she's having at home and her relationship with Daniel through email is a big chunk of the book. And I was not a big fan of that part of it, but I wanted to mention this one because, you know, some of you might ask about it or mention in the comments and a lot of people loved it. So I still want to bring it up. Now the other one, and this one just like, it made me sad because it had such great potential. And that is The Red Scott by Twyla Turner. And this one is about Brayden and Peyton. And so Brayden is the Red Scott. He's an MMA fighter. He is a big, burly, redheaded Scotsman. He is delicious and he is a sweetie. He used to be a fat kid when he was young and he became a fighter because he was being bullied a lot. So he taught himself to fight so that he could fight back. Um, and he owns a gym called the Red Scott. And then we have Peyton who we meet in a flashback where when she is 18 in college, she gets assaulted by this boy that she was tutoring. He tries to rape her. She gets away and she gets rescued by three other women who happen to be walking on campus. So they're able to stand up to this guy. And then though he didn't rape her, he had raped other people. And so he gets put away, but only for a few years. Like he doesn't get a lot of time. And she has spent the last 12 years being terrified of men, especially men with muscles. So when she decides when she's 30 years old to finally start working on this problem that she has, she starts going to the Red Scott, the gym, to start putting herself, like exposure therapy, immersion therapy, to start putting herself around big muscly men so she can become more comfortable with them. And Brayden, he gets one look at this beautiful, curvilicious woman and he wants her. But number one, he's super shy. And number two, he's a big hunk of hunk of burn in love and is not what she wants to be approached by, right? So her friends take it upon themselves to help Brayden have an in to talk to her. Um, and then he goes on to be like the sweetest man I've ever written. You've never read a bigger cinnamon roll with such a delicious body in your life. But Peyton is overly traumatized by what happened to her 12 years ago in a way that, well, maybe that exists in real life. I don't know how this is her 12 years later, right? I don't understand how this is her 12 years later because literally she bumps into a man and she runs cowering like a puppy that like pees itself if they get scared. And I just didn't know how Brayden did it. Like, I didn't know how he did it because she was constantly shying away from him. And he's like, I'm not a rapist or someone who will hurt someone. I protect you with my life. Give me a break. And, you know, so I don't know. Like, that's a bit hard to talk about. But I wanted to mention it because, again, the hero was amazing. And maybe you won't find her skittishness as aggressive as I did. I just wanted to be honest about like the issues that I had with the book because I think the author went overboard trying to make her point that okay we get it this woman is traumatized and I've definitely read all kinds of trauma and nobody's trauma is the same like I get it I just think that the level of trauma and insecurity she had didn't make for a good romance novel because if someone had those issues in real life to the level that she portrays them in this book, she would need to be on some medication and or seeing a therapist regularly. Like, that's what I mean. But Peyton was scrumptious and delicious and the book may be worth it to you to try just for him. So there you go. I hope these are some recommendations you haven't heard of before, some you're willing to give a try to, um, some very popular ones and some ones you might not have heard of. This was a really fun adventure for me, finding some curvy girls and 
I just can't wait to find more of them. I've even read some more since I made this list. So definitely be following along. Check out my Goodreads to see what I'm reading to find more recs for things. All my socials are down below in the description. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.